My name is Anthony Patterson. My first poem is entitled, When a Black Man Compliments Your Fate. When a black man compliments your fade, the whole week's worth of drowning suddenly turns into still waters you can wade in. For a moment, you're whole. Someone sees you, you, the one with the hair, the one constantly seen yet not seen, gawked at, scoffed at for a moment. You're no longer that lurching swamp thing from the lagoon. For a moment, you're butterfly, not wasp or hardened cocoon. You're black, i.e. beautiful, not black, i.e. hang him now before he does something. Shoot him now, he might do something. Frame him now, he might be something. Art. When a black man compliments your fade, you know it's done well. He's not complimenting solely because of your shade. White men too get fades. But their hair, already revered with nothing to fear, nothing to lose, no style unprofessional, no color a danger, no density a nightmare to a stranger, my hair curls into a ball of anger. My clothes are wrinkled not because of my refusal to use hangers. They are wrinkled because of pressure. It never irons out or has a recusal. No, the judge stays and the case remains. I'm on trial. And just before the gavel moves from hope to inevitable death, I am saved. A black man just complimented my waves. He knows the mystic properties of a do-rag. And damn it, I'm a sage. I know silk, I know satin. Hell, even my brush knows Latin. Our turmoil is at the arcane stage. He knows the only magic could tame this rage. Legislation doesn't wax it. A single container of Murray's wanes it. A lifetime supply, $4.99. When I'm spinning, the world isn't. When I'm dipping, my grip on reality isn't slipping. A black man just complimenting my fade. My heart turns to water from jade, he knows. He knows how long this takes. He knows the pain, but he also knows the joy, the beauty of the coconut oil-kissed canvas, the magnificence of deep ripples in time, the power of the reveal. The majesty of a true wave check is real. Every strand of hair, a sun-smiled flower of bliss, its power known to heal. When a black man compliments your fade, don't just wave. Take time, stop, and if you can, shake his hand and say, I love you too. Jokers. I'm funny, kind, and compassionate, with brooding yet optimistic eyes. See, I'm not funny on purpose. I'm funny with purpose. I know without asking that most likely you've had a bad day, bad night, bad week, bad life. I want to laugh with you. Knowing it's still hard, just want to laugh with you. Under the stars, walking down alleys in the supermarket, cooking dinner on Zoom with just eye contact across the room. Laughter. Ugly face, can't see straight, gut-busting disaster. Eyebrows raised, mouth open, hyperventilating like porn, watching a pastor fuck a chuckle, running around making phonetic sounds while our knees buckle, forgetting where time went. Sore abs like... Laughing is a workout on par with CrossFit, it is. We're working out years of despair with every moment of unadulterated nonsense. It's been a long time since we've felt this way. Out of breath, not words, this is my kind of out-of-body experience. Because when we stop laughing, and we will have to stop, they will make us stop when we stop laughing. We remember the generations of our ancestors stolen from us by kidnapping. When we stop laughing, we remember why it's so hard to laugh. When we stop laughing, we give in. So we never stop. We keep a yo mama close. We tuck a, if you don't get your under the pillow, we slide a, and I know you're not talking in every wallet, purse, bag, and pocket. We load a, oh, so you thought we forgot about when you, just in case we have to cock it. We roast for survival, our memory of mishaps, archival. And every day we test ourselves in the mirror, our greatest rival. We laugh as worship at the altar of pain, at nerds, at jocks, at pimps, at hoes, at knockoffs, at name brands, and white man's clothes, at stupid, at smart, at books, at art, at movies, at work, at favorite things, at the way and the witch and the hows and the wildest dreams. We ha-ha and he-he at the vilest of scenes. We're victims, turned jokers. 
laughing toward an insanity that's fleeting. If I told you, I was funny with brooding yet optimistic eyes, would you be surprised that they're still bleeding? Beluga, status, near threatened, population almost good enough, cut like diamonds yet gnashed by unbearable teeth, raw yet contaminated, this world too much for the songbirds of the sea. What's a song's worth when no one understands what you sing, when your death is life? We're building a catalog of oddities. What if all the tumorous belugas were staccato in arpeggio prophecies, filled with philosophies, hubris in the songs they sing, waiting for a way to bring praise, not blood and decay, pesticides of 30 years ago pumped in their veins, toxins. So disturbing, no one can even pronounce or dare say the poison that must be named. What if water was just water and beluga whales got the chance to sing scales, top charts, have galleries of arts, and lose to blue shells in Mario Kart. They are first, after all. Scientists say that in order to stay in tune, songbirds must practice their songs. If their songs are off, it can be a series of tragedies. No song, no mate. Disaster incarnate. Wouldn't it be great to hear perfect pitch instead of the sloshing sound of their bodies piled in a ditch. Can you hear it? See, they are out of tune and time. Instead of going platinum in sales, we have given them mercury jails. They're dying of cancer, yet never smoked. Dying from an opiate crisis, though they never lit spoon, tied rope, or did coke. How's that for hope? There is no foundation, organization, research, GoFundMe, or Nat Geo article for them anymore. It's been years since we've heard your sweet song. Years since we acknowledged you've been wronged. Your Cook Inlet cousins are almost gone. We are summoning unsacred spells to increase the power of the sun, deteriorating natural bonds with steroids, only thinking about a home run. But this is your planet, too. Barely, I think. We're not sorry. We're not changing. We're still caging, still faking that we care by the niceties of waving while harpooning and slaving. Blood always in our wake. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Let's dump some more toxins in the bay. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Mm, the smell of red tide makes the life run away. Smothers all hope from the lungs. Canary of the sea, we don't deserve your song. Sadly, your erasure has only just begun. Happy Earth Day. Hope you make it to the next one. Selfie sticks at Auschwitz. A little about me. I'm even killed by choice and discipline. It's not in my nature. Like... A polar bear, much of my life I've been a threat, yet I'm endangered. Simply put, I'm not easily angered. However, my blood doesn't always agree with me, but you would never know. I'll be positive. My blood is pure enough for any transfer. It boils, but my skin is just stark enough that it'll never show. So when it steams, I donate to the bank. No one wants a blood stain on their white cotton tea. It soils it. A little about my history. Mother, Cantor, her grandmother, Levine. Maternally, my family is Eastern European, Jewish. I've eaten more potato pancakes than you could dream. Matzo balls are gross. Kugel is supreme. Lox and bagels is weird. Selfie sticks at Auschwitz is everything my great-grandmother feared. The gravesite becomes a circus with no ringmaster, yet the crowds still appear. Most can't fathom what happened here, but wait, I hear the shudder and click of little Miss Selfie Stick coming from the rear. My heart fills with dread. I shudder and steam steeps from my ears. Thankfully, it appears there is no tolerance for it. That's not to say taking a photo is less than okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but it must be done with tact, not for the likes of the gram. The weight is unbearable. More history. Father, 
Patterson. His grandfather, Hyman, paternally in my family is complicated. From Arkansas, yet not from Arkansas. America, yet African, black. I've eaten as much fried chicken as you imagined. Crawdads and catfish blackened. I don't do okra or chitlins. The cotton field is where the slavers commit sins. So it's much to my dismay when an ambiguously intentioned person thinks it's not the same when I say, how dare you? Dress up and play in a cotton field. Don't you know this is my black family's Auschwitz? In 1860, the census would say there were four million slaves living in the USA, working to death. This Holocaust occurred for more than 250 years in plain sight, yet the United States did not wage war on it, nor did they claim victory. They reconstructed the game of chains, a debt no one seems willing to pay. It's funny. Most people love when their loans have low interest rates. You're in debt, yet get paid to shoot at the place my family was shot. You're in debt, yet get a wage where my family was bought. I shudder when I hear your shudder. My voice cracks like the whip, but I won't stutter. I hope your lens captures the blood-soaked field. I know your viewfinder is filled with ghosts. Maybe. Then you'll see and one day know that this place, this cotton field, is haunted for black folks.